what is changing in F1 for 2019 and 2021. If you've been following F1 lately, read the news and haven't been living under a rock, you've already heard about the proposed rule changes for the 2019 and 2021 F1 seasons. But what are they and how will it affect the sport? We're here to break it down for you, starting with 2019. We all know that for decades drivers have had to watch their weight because the lighter they are, the more ballast can be added to help optimise the balance of the car. Now, this change doesn't mean that Kimi can tuck into ice creams every single day of the week, but driver weight will now be considered separately to the car, rather than as a combined figure, which for 2018 was 734 kilograms. So how will they implement this? Well, a minimum weight of 80 kilograms is expected to be introduced for drivers, and if they weigh less than this, then there will be ballast added adjacent to the driver's seat. No more weighing 68 kilograms, Mr. Hamilton, like it says on Google and it's probably outdated and wrong. What else is there? Oh yeah, more fuel. The fuel load limit has been increased by five kilograms to 110 kilograms. This is an exciting one as it should allow drivers to use engines at full power for the entire race. Well, maybe not every team, but hopefully we'll see less lift and coasting and drivers pushing harder. And who could forget the biggest change of them all? The new aero rules, finally. This could change the racing spectacle in F1 entirely. Essentially, they are stripping back on the complexity of the winglets on front wings and brake ducts to enable the cars to follow better and be affected less by dirty air. Taking away the complexity means the air is less disturbed coming off the back of the F1 car, making it easier for the car behind to follow, which, in a nutshell, should mean much closer racing. They're also making the rear wing deeper and wider, which should increase the power of DRS, as it will create more drag when not being used, but when DRS is activated, the drag will be reduced even more so than before. This could, however, cause DRS overtakes to become too easy, so the FIA may have to adjust the zones coming into next season. Now, let's move on to the big changes that are currently proposed for the 2021 season regarding engine regulation. Well, before the changes, it's worth noting that F1 are keeping the 1.6 litre V6 turbo hybrid, which is good news. I know a lot of older F1 fans want the V8, V10s back, but that is simply unrealistic. If anything, it was more likely to head in the direction of a V4 engine. Now, this next one is something I'm pretty interested to see. The engines will have a 3000 RPM higher engine running speed range to improve the sound. It's not quite going to be the 20,000 plus RPM we saw a few decades ago, but it certainly should be a step in the right direction towards people not complaining constantly that the engines aren't loud enough. Next, we have a restriction on developmental costs and extreme designs. Essentially, the design of the engine will be restrained to certain parameters, which will hopefully stop the bigger F1 teams from spending a ridiculous amount of money to gain an advantage into the next season. Moving on now, we say goodbye to one of the most costly and complex elements of the current V6 hybrid era the MGU-H. For those wondering, the MGU-H is the energy recovery system connected to the turbocharger of the engine and converts heat energy from exhaust gases into electrical energy. It is something that Honda in particular struggled to get their heads round, which caused a fair few of their retirements. I'm saying it now, Torosso Honda for the 2021 championship. This next one excites me greatly. I loved Kurs back in the day and it seems like something similar, but probably not as effective, will be coming back to F1. With the removal of the MGU-H, the MGU-K will be more powerful and the deployment of energy will be up to the driver to manually deploy. They will also have the option of saving up energy over several laps to add another element of driver tactics. It'll be very interesting to see how this unfolds in races. Finally, there seems to be more emphasis towards F1 becoming a more plug and play series with engine, chassis and transmission swap capability, as well as standard energy store and control electronics. What this means is that if a team was to have a McLaren Honda season of blowing up and wanting out, it will be much easier for them to do so without having to completely rebuild the car around a different engine. In conclusion, it has been frustrating for F1 fans to see such huge gaps between the teams since the new engine regulations began in 2014. Hopefully this will rejig the pack a little as well as potentially bringing new, big teams to the sport. And who wouldn't want that? What team would you like to see join Formula 1? Let us know in the comments section below.